All right, good morning, guys. Today we're gonna to be talking about auxiliary views. So these are views we make that you'll see in the drawings. They're there to show you the true shape of an inclined surface and its features. Um, they also help to make the drawing easier to understand because they're taking out stuff that doesn't really help at all and just giving you what you need to know. So when we have auxiliary views, there's two types of ways that are shown. One is in the typical alignment where it's still lined up, um, like if we had done a view there, but we just, because this view is already placed, now this one comes off at an angle instead of being straight down. Okay. So it just comes off at the angle. So that way we're looking straight at the side of this beam here. So that's the typical alignment. Still end up like normal, just at a different angle. <clears throat> Removed is where we take that view and we move it out of the way. And so this will sometimes allow better use of the paper um, and things like that. So these views could be anywhere they wanted to be on the paper or on an entirely different sheet of paper. Um, but the view lines here, they look just like our cutting plane lines we used last week in sections. They're there, but they're called view lines now because they're outside of the part, they're not cutting the part. And instead of calling it section, whatever, we call it view, whatever. So view A is looking from this line that way, the direction of the arrows. BB is looking from here down, the direction of the arrows. And we get that. Speaking of sections, what kind of a section is this? You think about that for a minute. You should be thinking a broken out section. The broken out section because it's using the short break line just so we can cut right there. We're not making another view for the section. So here's a part that needs an auxiliary view. If we're looking at this, we can see it has this counterboard hold here. We can see that in this view here, we can kind of see everything. We can see the counterboard hole. We can see these holes. Um, but at the top view, we're not looking straight down at those holes, so we don't we can't see this measurement. Because if I try to measure here, that's not true because this surface is foreshortened, it's going down away from us. Same thing here, the surface is going down. So I can't measure off of those surfaces, which means the person making the drawing couldn't put a dimension there. <clears throat> they could try and do it here, they could try and do a section, and that just gets messy. So a better solution is to do an auxiliary view or in this case, two. One auxiliary view here, looking this direction. But you can see this one is the typ typical alignment. So this line lines over there, that line lines up that hidden line, that with that hidden line, that line with that point. But now we can see that T slot and all of its dimensions. We have a, cut, a view line here, or cutting plane line, making AA. And then it's a removed view over here. And so now we can see from this edge to the center of the holes, distance between the holes, distance between the holes. It's a lot easier to understand. Then at the top, we only have this side with the counterboard. We don't have this other side over here because this, we, this doesn't help us at all. Uh, so this is called a partial view. All three of these are actually partial views because they're only showing us the part of the, of the, the piece that we need to see. It's eliminating things that are not going to be helpful. So like on this view, if that line extended over here, now the certain, this, the counterbore would be on an inclined face in that view and it wouldn't be helpful at all. So we're only showing what, what's helpful. So here's another example. So this is a part that it's got like two little arms going off, but they're all, they're going down at different angles and then they have their shapes. And so, you can have auxiliary views come from other views. So here we have our main view and then a regular front view. <clears throat> and then we're looking, since this line is straight, it's horizontal, it means that this line here is true length so we can see how long it is. And you can see that there's no extra going back and forth on the, like no, no little shadows from it being tilted away from us. So we can come off of that and do an auxiliary view. 
You also come from here and come parallel to this edge to see that. Now I can see that little kind of arm of it here from the side and then go perpendicular to that to create that at auxiliary view. And to show you that there's nothing really special about them, we could take this and we could turn this this way. And now it'd be principal, principal, primary auxiliary, primary auxiliary, secondary auxiliary. Just be, it's based the what it's called is just based on how it's related to the like the normal layout. Um, but don't worry about what it's called. Um, as long as it's projected correctly, you should be able to understand what it means. So don't get caught up with oh no, it's at a different angle. It's something weird now. No, it's not. Just turn your head, um, and then it's lined up correctly. No. Okay. So don't stress. It's an easy thing. Um, every every time that people talk about auxiliary reviews and even how I did it for a long time. We went on for on on the topic for a long time and kind of made it more confusing as we went when it really was a really simple concept. So it's just the same exact views that we normally use, just turned at a little different angle. Okay? Because this is a regular view now and now it's an auxiliary view. And this one was an auxiliary view, now it's a regular view. So don't get caught up on what the views are called. Just worry about how it's aligned. That'll tell you everything you need to know about it. All right, bye.